So folks, it keeps on getting worse. Earlier today, we covered that disaster of a hearing that was designed to try and defend Trump, but only incriminated him. But hit the like and subscribe button because we have an update about how much worse it got for Trump as more Democrats took their turn to crush Republicans, to crush Durham in that hearing. And what they revealed were direct and more recent than we thought ties between Trump and Russian espionage and Russian spies and Russian misinfo and subterfuge and intimidation and all of those things. And it's really bad. And it had a direct consequence as law enforcement today made a big response in and around MAGA land in a pretty direct way because of all of this. So what I have for you is a bit of a supercut of Democrats continuing to tear into this effort to defend Trump and to downplay his treasonous ties to Russian spies, but also media reacting to it as well, saying that as much as they tried to cover up Trump Russia, today is maybe the biggest day in the Trump Russia scandal since he left office. Simple point is getting lost. Republicans will do anything, say anything, and spend any amount of money to hide the basic truth that their leader is a criminal, corrupt, narcissistic buffoon. That's why we're still talking about Carter Page. That's why anyone even knows who John Durham is. That's why Republicans are still carrying on Mr. Durham's work by launching frivolous investigations that end with them embarrassing themselves by propping up obvious lies. It has always been about gaslighting the country. So instead of holding these farcical hearings about farcical investigations, I urge my colleagues our Republican colleagues to get serious and start legislating on behalf of their constituents instead of helping the twice impeached, twice indicted Donald Trump further evade accountability. Thank you, and I yield back. And the other two men you prosecuted went to trial on the charges, uh, charging, they, they were accused of lying to the FBI, and both were slam dunk acquitted, isn't that correct? They were acquitted. And none of the individuals you prosecuted were ever charged with being part of a hoax or a fraud or a witch hunt or a politically motivated deep state conspiracy against Donald Trump. Isn't that correct? I would not say that that's accurate. You mean you did charge somebody with being a part of a hoax? We charged Mr. Sussman with having knowingly provided false information to the FBI regarding Alpha Bank. But he, lying was, he was acquitted, though, right? After well, that wasn't your question. He, well, he was, Mr. Sussman was acquitted after you charged him, correct? Grand jury found He was problem. found innocent by a jury of, uh, by a unanimous jury of 12. That's not true. Well. What's true okay. is the grand jury found probable cause to indict uh, Mr. Uh, Sussman. Uh, a jury of a his peers ju- acquitted him, though, correct? And a trial jury. You're not, you're not going to disagree on that, are you, uh, Mr. Durham? I'm going to try to answer your question as well. Well, let me ask you this, because in your block from doing it, that's correct. That's correct. I also want to compare you to the last major special counsel investigation that we had. You agree, Special Counsel Mueller charged dozens of individuals, and you indicted three. Is that correct? Indicted two, and another a third pleaded guilty. Right, and. Special Counsel Mueller had dozens of convictions, some at trial, but no defendant was outright acquitted. Is that right in the Mueller investigation? Outright acquitted. Across the board, every charge acquitted. Right. I, I don't believe there are any acquittals. I'm not sure there were uh, dozens of convictions. There were dozens of, uh, there, yeah, more than a dozen people who were indicted. You were why? Speaker of the House of Representatives. Gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the general for yielding and for his great presentation today. Today, we are on the floor of the House where the other side has turned this, this chamber where slavery was abolished, where Medicare and Social Security and everything were instituted. They've turned it into a puppet show, a puppet show. And you know what? The puppeteer, Donald Trump, is shining a light on the strings. You look miserable. 
you look miserable. The only advantage to all of this is that instead of reversing what we did on the IRA to save the planet or reversing what we did to reduce the cost of prescription drugs, you're wasting time. Adam Schiff is one of the greatest expired. members of that. The gentleman's time has expired. I, I have a the gentleman's ten time more has seconds. expired. The gentlelady's time has expired. He said his is expired? The gentleman from Maryland's time has expired. Okay. No. The FBI had all that information prior to opening Operation Hurricane, correct? Crossfire Hurricane, is that right? That's correct. Okay. If the FBI had chosen to do so, the multiple pieces of information they had would have allowed them to open a preliminary investigation. Is that right? In our report, we say that the FBI certainly uh, had an obligation to uh, assess the information, you know, perhaps make it a preliminary investigation. That's okay. Our In fact, it would have been a dereliction of duty for the FBI to have just sat on their hands and done nothing with the information that they had. Is that right? Yeah, the FBI should not have ignored that information. Okay. It's also true, isn't it, that the Inspector General of the Department of Justice looked at this situation and concluded that not only did the FBI have enough information to open a preliminary investigation, the FBI had enough information to open a full investigation. That was the conclusion of the Inspector General, correct? My recollection is that the uh, Inspector General said it's a low bar and he thought that it had been met. Um, the Inspector General didn't necessarily address um, well, and, so uh, thank you. I'd like to enter their Inspector General's report dated December 2019 into the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Okay. Turns out the FBI was correct. The Department of Justice found that the Russians interfered in our elections in a, quote, sweeping and systematic manner. A bipartisan U.S. Senate report confirmed that the Russians interfered in the 2016 elections and that that interference benefited Donald Trump. Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign chairman, also publicly admitted to giving internal Trump campaign data to the Russians, and the U.S. Treasury Department found that this data, which it said was, quote, sensitive information on polling and campaign strategy, was then passed to Russian intelligence services. There is a phrase to describe the facts I just set forth. It's called Russian collusion. With what Charlie and Garrett have both reported, and just uh, our reporter, our viewers are, are down in the weeds with well-versed folks, but I just want to put this out there. This critique that Durham has that a full investigation was opened instead of a preliminary is the one legitimate, I don't know if it's even legitimate, but it is the one thing that he, that he finds. It is the difference that he has um, with how it was done. At the end of the day, though, to both Charlie's reporting and Garrett's, he does not come out and refute the facts that predicated the opening of uninvestigation. It's, it's simply this rather technical dispute about whether it should have been a preliminary instead of a full. But the wreckage, the blast radius, four years of Donald Trump and Sean Hannity and everyone on the right building up the Durham report is coming. The Durham, I remember being um, in Washington with Trump era Justice Department officials on the eve of the Mueller report coming out, and they said, This is nothing. Wait till you see what Durham's got. And I said, Oh, yeah? What does Durham have? Durham never had anything except a tip to open an investigation into Donald Trump. And that was something he couldn't even answer for today. What did you think? You were someone whose conduct as a public servant was scrutinized. You were exonerated by, by everybody. But tell me what you thought watching today. Well, Nicole, when I read the report when it came out, I think my reaction was much like others. I was very, it was underwhelming. Uh, Department of Justice Inspector General Michael Horowitz, I think, did a very good job of pointing out some of the missteps, the tactical missteps that the FBI made as it pursued this investigation. And also then the Senate Intelligence Committee did a review of this. And so I do think that from the standpoint of the, the rightness of the investigation in 2016 to find out what the Russians were doing and what the Trump campaign was doing in support of some of those Russian efforts, I think was critically important. But John Durham did not reveal anything new. 
In fact, my reading of the report, and particularly those aspects that I have firsthand knowledge about, I think he did intentionally misrepresent and skew his findings in order to support the basic premise of his investigation, which was what Bill Barr and Donald Trump wanted was to try to discredit the investigation that was underway into the 2016 presidential election interference. And so I think what we heard from John Durham today, he went to great length to try to continue to cast his findings that were basically favorable to the GOP talking points. Garrett Haig, you covered this today. I want to show you um, an exchange between Adam Schiff, which is bubbling and generating a lot of questions about whether Mr. Durham, you know, at best misspoke or at worst was less than uh, truthful or candid. Let me show you this exchange. I mean, I think if you read what's in the cable and what's in the report as to what the uh, diplomats uh, reported was there was a suggestion of a suggestion that the Russians could help. They had damaging information as to Mrs. Clinton. Um, and By releasing it anonymously, release. right? And that's exactly what happened, isn't it? I, 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 don't, I don't... You really don't know? I'm, I'm not sure exactly... When you say exactly what happened... Well, the Russians released that... stolen emails... Through cutouts, did they not? There were emails. So it's a were very simple question. Did they release information, leaks. stolen information through cutouts, yes or no? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. That you really don't know the answer to that? The answer is yes, they did. Through DC leaks. Well, in your mind, to, it's yes. Well, <laughs> Mueller's answer was yes. More important than mine, Mueller's answer was yes. Now, that information, of course, was helpful to the Trump campaign, wasn't it? I don't, I don't think there's any question, but that the Russians intruded into, um, well, I just want to act get... into the systems, they released information. And that was helpful to the Trump campaign, right? And the, and the conclusion in the ICA and in the uh, Mueller investigation was that the Russians intended to assist. Can you answer Trump. my question, Mr. Durham? That was helpful to the Trump campaign, right? Yeah, that's... And, and Trump made are. use of that, as I said, didn't he, by touting those stolen documents on the campaign trail over a hundred times? I, I, I said, I don't really read the newspapers or listen to the news. I don't oh, really, you were, you were, reliable, you were totally, so I don't know that. Mr. Durham, you are totally oblivious to Donald Trump's use of the stolen emails on the campaign trail more than a hundred times? Did I'm that escape that. your attention? Like this man, like, they're like, this man just got exposed again. This is like, you found Russian spies in Mar-a-Lago today, might as well have at least. Like, it's awful. Donald Trump got everything he wished, it, the opposite of everything he wished in this. The whole hope here was uh, they would use this moment to, uh, you know, make the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax go away. But in reality, all that was confirmed in front of millions of people. And you watch all the clips and all of that from all the different sources that Donald Trump had undeniable connections to Russia and Russian spies. And those people had meetings with Trump world in and around his most private spaces. And they had a clear desire to make him president. And ultimately, like, look, the, there's a lot of factors about why Trump won and Hillary lost that election. But the point is less, was that the decisive factor? And more, Russia wanted Trump to win and Trump wanted their help from using Russian espionage and treasonous tactics. And that was exposed today more than any day in years.